Right, Daniel, it's very nice to meet you and thank you for your time today. Uh, you're going to be telling us about your, um, your stand-up, aren't you, your stand-up event? Yeah, I'm a stand-up poet. Well, I'll say Daniel Jim McLaughlin's the name. And I realised being a stand-up poet, there's already one in Salford that I can't claim from the top, and that's Mr Cooper Clark. But I'm Lancastrian slash Salfordian, so I learned to be the second best Salford stand-up. <laughs> and it's a mixture of comedy and poetry, me taking a mickey mainly out of myself. It's a mixture of rants about, I don't know, geese, grinder, gays, geek, gods, governments, and other things that don't belong with G, but I thought that's good for the advertising thing. It's got an interesting title, isn't it? So I have heard the title before. Would you like to tell us a bit about the title? Yeah, the title is Rant and Iambic Pentameter. Uh, basically, I had to come up with a short title and I panicked. So I came up with that, which means the unfortunate thing is I have to write at least one rant in Iambic <laughs> Pentameter. It's a poetical form that uh, Shakespeare used. It's ten syllables per line, so dum de dum de dum de dum And... Yeah, so I've sort of snooked myself a little bit by calling it that. Basically, what I'm trying to sort of convey is that, yeah, it is poetry. That comes across as very pretentious, very sort of boring sometimes. But, but that's why I've got the rant in, because I wanted to say something that's very bomber and serious into something actually a bit silly and stupid and a bit full of mischief rather than uh, macabre and uh, menace and uh, masterful dialogue. <laughs> It's on in um, the Northern Quarter, isn't it? Yes, it's in a lovely wee bar called the Fitzgerald uh, in the Northern Quarter. I've paid in the Fitzgerald a few times. It's, it's a cracking place, but brilliant cocktails. It reminds me of a sort of New York jazz bar, sort of New York oh, speakeasy yeah. thing. So it's, it's got a good atmosphere, and I had to choose from a few venues. And as soon as I saw that was on the list, I thought, I have to absolutely do there. Because yeah. I thought, like, it sort of fits. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to become like a 1950s comic and speaking a Brooklyn accent, but it's got a really good atmosphere. It's very intimate. My uh, act uh, involves a lot of chat to the crowd, having interaction. So having them right in front of me, having a wee drink, that's perfect. I perform in pubs yeah. and I get heckled ruthlessly. Yeah. Oh, goodness me, the heckles, I can't say on there. But, <laughs> but it made me a better comic and a better poet. And it's nice to have that in a similarly intimate environment but hopefully less heckles but do bring your best. You're learning your craft there aren't you in the pubs. You're learning how to deal with people who yeah. you and you're probably getting better and better at Well you know back in the day the comics used to do the working men's clubs but there's not as many of them these days and mm. and there are poetry nights and very posh bars in Manchester but they're very serious. The people talk about their traumas and people talking about their personal lives. Well I'm not that. I take the mickey out of everything so the other poets don't particularly like me, I don't think. So I decided Daniel to jump in the lines then and go into a place that might be sort of, not necessarily welcoming of the act, but my job is to win them over. A bit like what John Cooper Clark did back in the day. You know, he performed in pubs and in front of punk audiences who were never going to be the most welcoming to a poet. But he became so much better for it. So you, you get used to responding to people. And I actually now, as I do it, first it terrified me. Now when people heckle me, it makes the night, it really, it makes the acts, it makes it special. Yeah, I should imagine you learn some witty retorts to them. <laughs> yeah, certainly, but in, in vulgar language, uh, I, I give as much as I get because I'm half Irish, half uh, Lancastrian. My language is, they say poor, I think it's actually more extensive because I know more words, because I know more swear words. <laughs> Yeah, and there's, there's room for more than one comic in Salford anyway. I think we've got a lot of good stand-up people in there. Is this your first Fringe? This is my first ever show. This is my, my debut wow. one-man show. And yeah, so by, by, by that, it's my first ever Fringe. I'm excited and nervous. Quite terrified, but a giddy terrified. I've watched a friend of mine. I've, I know a lot of musicians in Manchester, and they're incredibly talented, and I was stood at the back of their gig a couple of months ago, and I thought... Cracky, I want to do that. I, I want to do that. So I, a bit of jealousy and bitterness, that's how I signed up. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so it's, it's going to be my first time. I'm doing the one night, so for one night only at the Fitzgerald. 3rd of July. The 3rd of July, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yes, 7 o'clock. Tickets, right. reasonable. That's £7, I think. Good. No, that sounds really great. I'm sure you'll do really well, Daniel. I'm sure you'll be a great success, you know, and uh, I wish you all the best with that. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Please buy tickets. I need the money. I'm desperate. <laughs> there you are. At least that's honesty from you. <laughs>